What's going on? Welcome back to 100% NUFC. You're watching the Wolverhampton Wanderers versus my club Newcastle United match preview this Saturday. It's at Molyneux. It's a three o'clock kickoff. And just before I jump into the preview, if you do go and join the video at any point, please do us a favour by hitting the thumbs up and also subscribing to the channel for regular content. Also, hit the uh, notification bell so when a video does drop for myself, you never miss one. Now, going into the match on Saturday, I have to say... I'm not really looking forward to it, given that we drew 1-1 against Rochdale in the FA Cup. Wolves is going to be a very tough game, especially at Molyneux. They're having a very good season, despite you know finishing really strong last season and having you European competition to deal with. They're having such a good season again under Nuno Espirito Santo, and um, they're going to be up for it again on Saturday against us, and they're going to be looking for all three points. And uh, given our run of form at this moment in time, it's not very good and we'll have to stop it eventually because we are starting to really plummet down the league table and that's not exactly what we want. I know that we've had a few issues in terms of injuries and stuff and uh, that's really had a massive effect in terms of you know results. But at the same time, if you've watched us as of late, the way we've just crumbled in games hasn't been acceptable. But we have had some good news uh, this week in terms of the injury front. We have got up to six players back from injury uh, that I've featured in training this week it has been confirmed and they are Jetro Willems, Paul Dummett, Keevan Clark, Almiron, Dwight Gale and Andy Carroll. Now in terms of the defender front it is nice to see Willems, Paul Dummett and Keevan Clark back because we have been leaking in goals for fun and uh, we are known for defending really well but the last two or three games have just been a bit of a write-off in terms of defensive good football and you know, keeping the ball out the back of the net. It just hasn't happened, unfortunately. And we also haven't scored the goals uh, to replicate, you know, when we've gone forward. So it has been important that we've managed to get, you know, a few of these defenders back. Also, Andy Carroll, Dwight Gale and Amiron, again, they're also important as well because we have missed them, you know, over the course of the last few games. So um, that can only be a positive thing going forward. We have heard that St. Maximin uh, has been training this week, but I don't expect him to feature against Wolves on Saturday or neither against Rochdale in the FA Cup. I think he will feature the weekend after. That's just my opinion, but we'll have to wait and see on that. In terms of Jamal Lascelles and Shelby, they are ruled out for the game against Wolves this weekend. So that's a bit of a shame on that front, but I'm sure we've got the likes of the long staffs who can come in and fill in uh, in that position. Now, in these previews, I have brought something new out for the channel in terms of previews going forward. I am bringing up my start 11 for the matches i'm not going to do separate videos like what everybody else does i'm just going to put my start 11 in the preview so you can see exactly uh what i've gone with for the game on the weekend if anything does change in terms of the start 11 i will put it down below in the comments any changes that i have made in terms of any injuries that there occur so going into the match on saturday you know our record against wolves isn't fantastic i have to admit our last win uh, down at Molyneux, came back in the championship season in 2017, uh, where we beat them by a goal to nil. We also haven't really got the best record of late in the Premier League against Wolves. Uh, last season, uh, we only got a 1-1 draw down at Molyneux, but this season, uh, we did draw 1-1 at St James's Park. We ought to should have won that game, really. We did take the lead, but Wolves did fight back at the end, and they could have won it. Uh, from a very fam familiar name in Doty, who could have actually got the winner at St James's Park right at the death, but uh, you put it wide. Whereas uh, last season, um, they did beat with 2-1 at St James's Park, where the same guy, Doty, actually scored late on uh, for Wolverhampton Wanderers to give them all three points. Um, we did play them in the Asia Trophy, uh, where we did lose by you know four goals to nil. But I will admit, you know, Wolves have got a better squad than us. Um, they're definitely in a high spirit at this moment in time, you know, with the money that's going into their football club, and uh, they spend it wisely. You know, they're finishing very high in the league. You know, last season they finished seventh. This season, they are currently seventh in the Premier League and the table doesn't lie. They're not fluking it by any stretch of the imagination. They're a good squad and uh, they work well together. They've got some very good names and they spend within their means as well. So it's not a case of they're just buying their way through a seventh place. They're actually spending really well. They play very good football. Tick attacker, if you like, you know, pass, move, pass, move, pass, move. And they like to get shots off as well. So um, they definitely are a tough nut to crack and... Uh, they're a very well-drilled side. But in terms of us on Saturday, you know, we're going to have to go there with a game plan. You know, we're going to have to have a go because I've seen us in the last couple of games where we've just sat back and we've just allowed the teams 
you know, like Everton and Man United to capitalise on uh, our mistakes. And we're making too many mistakes at the back as well. You know, that's our big, big problem um, so far in the last uh, month. Making simple bad mistakes at the back. We'll have to be mentally drilled at the back. We'll have to make sure that um, when Wolves do get forward, um, that we do shut them off at every opportunity. Because if we do that, we are going to get chances of our own. But it's in terms of a game on Saturday where I think we'll have to be patient. I don't expect us to have a lot of the ball, as I say in many games that we've had previously. In that, we'll remain the same in this game on Saturday. You know, we're going to have to be patient because Wolves are the home side. The crowd's going to be behind them. And um, their players are very... Uh, skillful on the ball they're very good at getting you know past your defense you know if you make any mistakes and uh we'll have been totally out running that midfield as well so we'll have to keep it tight there as well we'll have to make sure that when we do get the ball we're working up the pitch very quickly to almiron or whoever you know we've got going forward uh, to make sure that we are actually creating opportunities because if we don't wolves will punish us um on saturday because they're a very good uh squad now i've actually put my starting 11 on screen for you right now um, I'll go player by player. So in goal, I've gone with Martin Dubravka. Again, number one, safe pair of hands. Now the back three, I've actually gone with Federico Fernandez. Again, another solid centre back, someone who can actually, you know, get the ball out. Somebody who, you know, can put his body on the line where he's needed. In the middle, I've actually gone with Kevin Clark. I've welcomed him back into the squad. A very good, you know, all round centre back. Someone who I think, you know, underrated at the football club. Someone who can actually do a job. Someone who can actually defend. Someone who can get the ball out. And uh, next to him, I've gone with Florian Rajun. Yes, I know he's not fully match fit, but at this moment in time, we haven't got any you know, centre-backs to choose from. And um, on his day, he can become a very good centre-back. He's somebody who's very strong you know, in the air, somebody who you know, can, on his day, if he's fully match fit, can you know, do the job in the centre of the defence. And um, the only way he's going to pick up his fitness is by playing more games. Now, on the left-hand side, I've actually put in Matt Ritchie. Uh, I've welcomed him back into the squad. Uh, he's such a vital player for us. You know, he, he's very good at getting forward. He can uh, take a couple of players out of the game. He can cut in. You know, he can have a go. And um, we're going to rely on him so much uh, on Saturday against Wolverhampton Wanderers. And on the right hand side, I've actually gone with DeAndre Yedlin. I know he's got a bit of a hand injury at this moment in time, but I'm sure he'll be okay. Um, he's got the pace, you know, to get up and down the pitch. And uh, a bit like Matt Ritchie, he likes to cut in. He will, you know, create problems as he did against Rochdale. And uh, I'm expecting more of the same on Saturday. Now, in the middle, I've actually gone with, first of all, Isaac Hayden. I've now put him back into the midfield because he was at centre-back against Rochdale. Someone who you can rely on. Someone who, for me, will protect you know, the back three. Someone who, he will get forward at every opportunity, but not as much. But he's more in terms of you know trying to work the ball at the Matt Ritchie or or to, to Yedlin on the other side. He's someone who you know likes to make sure that he plays tidy football, someone who makes sure that we're not getting overrun, and you can heavily rely on him uh, during the match as well. Uh, next one, I've gone with Matty Longstaff, who, for me, he needs games because Shelby's out at this moment in time, so someone who needs to really you know book up his ideas, someone who needs to be the, the, the Matty Longstaff who you know was playing well at the start of the season, the one who scored the goal against Manchester United. There's an opportunity for the young lad to... You know, get more games under his belt and uh, to prove Steve Bruce that he has what got you know, he has got what it takes to play in the Premier League. And then next to him, I've gone with his brother, um, Sean Longstaff. Again, someone who needs to buck up his ideas, someone who needs to you know play better. Someone who for me wasn't acceptable in terms of his performance against Rochdale. He got overrun. So did his brother. But there's a chance there to put it right against Wolves on Saturday to see and tell Steve Bruce that he is the right man. You know to really you know go forward with Newcastle United and that he has got a future at this football club. Because he has, you know, he's a local lad, and I do believe in them both. I believe that they've both got the uh, potential, you know, to really kick on and do well in the black and white shirt. Now, up front, the two I've gone with, the first of all, I've gone with Andy Carroll. We need to welcome Andy Carroll back because for me, we missed his presence against uh, Rochdale and we missed him, you know, in the games before that, ever in Leicester, for example. And um, we need to make sure that when we've got Andy Carroll up front, that we try and get the ball to him as best as we possibly can that when we're getting set pieces that Andy Carroll's on the end of it because if he is on the end of it nine times out of ten he's going to score or he's going to create an opportunity you know for you know one of the lads to score and uh, Andy Carroll is a big big uh, target man that we can um, rely on we do heavily rely on him too much but he's someone who you know can you know help out the side you know going forward uh, next time I've, I've gone with Al Miron of course uh, we need to try and get a bit more forward up the pitch um, normally he's played behind Andy Carroll but in this formation I've got him with like a two up front 
Um, we need to try and get I'll be wrong, you know, more goals. He has scored his second goal for Newcastle. Obviously, one uh, he scored against Crystal Palace. He's first in the Premier League, and he scored uh, last weekend against Rochdale. So it's two goals now. But you know, there's a chance there for him if he's further up the pitch. You know, to try and get him a few more goals. He's very quick. You know, getting up the pitch and. Uh, if you give him the right service, which I'm expecting from Richie and Yedlin, who I'm relying on more, he will, you know, do something. Yes, he has, you know, been getting the opportunities and he hasn't really been putting all the balls in the back of the net, but he has gradually been getting better. So uh, you've got to keep Alan on in uh, your starting 11. So that is my starting 11. Let me know yours down below in the comments. Now we're going to talk a little bit about Wolves at this moment in time. You know, they're currently 7th in the Premier League. and um, The last few results, um, they've been very hitty-missy. Um, they did draw 0-0. Um, at home to Manchester United. They've now got a force to replay in the FA Cup. That is not a bad result. I thought they were actually the better side. They should really have got through. I do expect them to probably pull off an upset at Old Trafford. In terms of the um, Premier League, though, they're not doing so well. They've lost the last couple of games. They, they did lose 2-1 to Watford um, at Vicarage Road. Um, they're doing really well so far, so it's not a surprise that um, Wolves have come off the back of a 2-1 defeat. And before that, they actually lost to Liverpool. Um, so let's be fair though, losing to both Liverpool and Watford, it's probably not a bad thing. Um, they're both doing so well. Liverpool, of course, you know, going on to win the Premier League title in Watford. They've had a real resurgence under um, Nigel Pearson. So uh, Wolves, I think they'll be looking to turn this game around. You know, on uh, Saturday they'll be looking to try and you know get a response and put those two defeats behind them and try and kick on up the uh, Premier League table and try and potentially get into those top four spots because you know they've got the potential you know to do that will they do it at the end of the season i don't know it's so tight but you never know wolves are wolves you know they're, they're so unpredictable side at times uh in terms of their squad though you know they've got players on form such as raul jimenez he's their top goal scorer he's got 11 goals uh this season jimenez is such a quality player the mexican striker you know he's not the quickest but if you give him you know some good service he's very good at uh, putting the ball in the back of the net someone who you can rely on if a ball comes into the box, he's great with his head as well. So he's fantastic there. Um, next, I would say Diego Jota as well. Someone who's like a winger. He likes to cut in. He likes to score. And um, he's got, what is it, six goals this season. So he's doing uh, really well for Wolves. And uh, someone who's got pace. Uh, someone who we need to keep an eye on, you know, when we're defending at the back. In Triro as well, we all know about him. Um, how, you know, he likes to get up and down the pitch from the, you know, the, the wing back position. He's got pace to burn. And he's got five goals this season. He has been linked with some top clubs. Uh, so far this window will he go I can't say it but he might go in the uh, summer he's got the pace which a lot of clubs are crying out for and um, he's having such a good season I'd say a breakthrough season given you know the likes of Aston Villa he didn't perform so well but uh, at Wolves he's really kicked on under Nino Espirito Santo and uh, in general they've got a good all-round side you know they've got Joe Matinho in that midfield who can get up and down the pitch as well you know at the back they've got Doty they've got um, players there who can actually cause you know, a problem on the day, and we have to make sure that we're we're up for it. Um, obviously, in goal, they'll have Rui Patricio, uh, the Portuguese international goalkeeper, who will have to try and work as best we can. He is a quality goalkeeper, and um, if you don't work him, then nine times out of ten, he's going to keep a clean sheet. So we'll have to make sure that we'll keep an eye out on 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 their sort of weakness at the back and try and you know frustrate them and try and work Rui Patricio. Uh, in terms of a score prediction though for the game, I'm actually going to go for a one-one draw. I'm trying to stay positive. Um, I think if we go down there and we play really well, I'm not expecting we're to win the game, but if we can defend really well and put on a good performance, a point wouldn't be the worst result down at the uh, Molyneux Stadium. And it's something we can build on and try and uh, work ourselves up the league rather than down. So uh, that's my score prediction for the game on Saturday. But let me know your score predictions down below in the comments. Again, let us know your start at 11. And um, yeah, this has just been your preview for the Wolves versus Newcastle United match. If there's any Wolves fans watching, please uh, subscribe. Hit the thumbs up on the video. Let us know your start 11. Let us know uh, about your season and how it's going so far under Nuno Espirito Santo. I would uh, love to hear what you have to say. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. And until the next one, I'll see you all later.